morning, everybody. Happy Friday. It is Donna and Steve on My Talk 1071. Everything Entertainment. Yeah, man. Woo, we made it, Stevie. Uh, how was your drive in? It was horrible, thank you. What's your. I mean. Oh. I know you to get angry oh. on the roads because that's just where you are the worst version of yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But for you to come in mm-hmm. and then intentionally write on our preparation materials mm-hmm. that people were driving like butts out there. Oh my there. gosh, from the uh, five minutes I'm on the road, somebody puts their left blinker on, they're in the right lane, cuts me off, this guy with a trailer. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. He he realized he was in an exit lane last minute. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I am driving to get onto 35W, and you're supposed to, it's merges, you know? Yeah. So 62 merges, and you got to share the road. Merch, babe. Guy behind me. I'm not going slow, by the way. I'm doing the speed limit. I'm doing like 65, a little over. Nice. That's a little over the speed limit. But anyway... And cuts me off and gets oh, in no. front of me. I'm like, what is your problem now? Then he starts cutting other people off. No, then he's a just third an angry car. Guy. Oh my God. Then a third person <laughs> was weaving in and out. And I'm like, oh. oh my gosh. You know, we were talking to um Mike Bryant of Bradshaw and Bryant yeah. the other day. And we asked him, What is the most common cause of accidents in your experience? And he said, I'd have to say speed. Yeah, he did say he said that ahead of phones. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're yeah. just people, people. Like, stop. Where are you going? And if you're late, then leave earlier. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Sorry I blew up, guys. You know, okay. you just think about these are weapons that we have. Exactly. 2,000 pound weapons. Just, yeah. Take True. a test and just, you know, they can be really disturbed and just be driving this weapon. You know, I don't know if the the licensing rules are the same here in Minnesota. I assume they are, but I know this. When I lived in New Mexico, I did an RV story one time, talking to this RV rental company. Mm-hmm. You do, do not need to have any kind of a special license. You just need a driver's license. Not a Class C, not like I can drive a truck so I can drive an RV. You just got to be 16 and licensed, and you can drive a motorhome. Wow. Think how long those are. That's like telling yeah. a, a like a sixteen year old who's licensed and passed their test in a a Miata that they can also <laughs> drive a tour bus. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, they put us through, when I drove my first like forty foot um, RV. Oh, okay, um, they put us through. There was no special license, so they made the Department of Transportation, the DOT guy, come over and give us tests for two weeks. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's good. That's because smart. that way you felt confident driving this huge... I mean, because it is like driving a truck. It's, you know... Oh, for sure. That's huge. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, that's easy. impressive, Don. Um, by the way, Misery Loves Company, we've dealt with some real extreme cold here. I think we'll all schadenfreude be happy to know that the East Coast <laughs> and Mid-Atlantic is about to get hit with a pummel with some sort of a bomb cyclone is what they're calling this winter storm. One that really, it, it gets uh, pressure and power really quick and then the pressure drops, which I think can then result in really heavy snowfall. So uh, this uh, this weekend back East, weather is going to be the story. One of those storms where even New York City, that doesn't often get snow accumulation. It's not like Manhattan proper doesn't get a lot of snow, but it's going to be snow covered this weekend. Mm. Uh, so anyway, that's the big weather story out east that we've dodged. Donna, meanwhile. Mm-hmm. I, I could tell it's a Friday. What's going I'm on just, with the email, I'm, man? Oh, man. So I have a friend who's going to be using my cabin this weekend. That's nice of you. And on Sunday, thank you. And on Sunday, I had sent him an email. And so last night, he's like, hey, um, can you send me some information? And I'm like, oh, I already did on Sunday. I said, I sent you pictures. I sent you, you know, where I'm the- sure it was a complete dossier. <laughs> um, just the neighbors, what their names are, their numbers, where you can go eat. It was, I, well, I did tell him where there's a new brewery. <laughs> um, but not. it wasn't that detailed. But he had offered to, to do some things for me up there like change the filter in my furnace nice. and hang uh mount a tv on the wall oh, wow perfect yes. this is the this kind is of guy we want to get up there exactly yes. so 
<laughs> he is like, Donna, I am. So, I go, hey, search by subject, cabin, uh, search topic, uh, subject, picks. And he's like, okay. And then he went and he looked and he's like, I am really sorry. I still don't have them. Well, lo and behold, let's say your, Steve, your email address is... Big Pappy at Hotmail dot com. <laughs> no, let's go with let's go with uh, let's go with S S Patterson at wherever dot com. Okay. I missed the double letter and I sent it to S Patterson, <gasps> who is a real person because it went through. It went through. It went through. So it bounced back. I have my address on there. No, I where have the key is the location. <laughs> <clears throat> of the hidden key. Oh, God! I gave all this personal information. <sighs> and so I say... The backstory to, about your neighbors, you know? Yeah, totally. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh, so no. I say to him, oh, my God, I just sent all this personal information to this the wrong your, person. Oh, this is your nightmare, Donna. This is terrible. And he goes, well, hopefully that person doesn't exist or they live in Russia. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm going to tell you on behalf of the Pattersons, if it was that, they don't live in Russia. Let me say this. Um, this guy who's going up to mount a TV and hang out at your cabin this weekend yep. clearly doesn't know you that well. <laughs> and the reason being, it's true. like, number one, the first thing we do in the case of a lost email is, Donna, we need you to start the search. You check on your end. Where did you send it to? You search cabin. You search keys. I did. That's how I gave him the information. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, but I mean, I would have started there of like, you know what this, if there's an email problem, God love you. You know, I love you. I didn't know there was an email. No, he was just saying that his email is so out of control. So it got lost. And I was like, oh, no problem. So rather than forward it to him again, I was just telling him, oh, search this and this. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I found it. Yeah. Which you just didn't realize when you found it that it was to a SS Patterson, not right. S Patterson. Correct. <laughs> God, the SS Patterson. What a great what ship a, she was. What a vessel. You know? Oh, what oh, a boy, vessel on, on her maiden voyage. Uh, and hey, guys, just to wrap up the, the start of this show right now, <laughs> let me just click this. Just it's time your... to play. What? What's in Donna's purse? Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we never know what she's going to bring into work before it's been her cordless phone from home, her television remote control. What's in Donna's purse today? Scotch tape. That doesn't seem correct. Oh, like, where great. did this come from? Why do I have this in my purse? Scotch tape. It's just a roll of scotch tape randomly in my purse. That is all. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. I the, know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. Just get started. The I gift know. that keeps giving. It's a uh, it's a fun Friday show. If you need some laughs, stick around. We think we can deliver some for you today. Hour three at eleven thirty. We do the Friday slow jam, or Rocco slows us down to half speed. We sound like total total idiots. Oh, no. uh, big news about who's coming back to the View in just a bit. But when we come back, we'll I don't know. I guess we'll wake up our brains with things that make you go, huh? March Simpson has that famous hairstyle. Straight up. It was originally <laughs> intended to hide something on her. Oh. And then the writers bailed on the idea. Any guess what that might have been? We'll tell you when we come back. Don and Steve on my talk. Hey, everyone knows the why is a terrific place to run, swim, stretch, and work on your fitness goals. Well, of course, but did you know that they also offer other benefits that improve your whole person well-being? That's right. The Y offers health coaching, acupuncture, mindfulness, and yoga. Yeah, so you can better your body and your mind. Oh, my gosh. Join the Y by January 31st and get $0 enrollment. Go to YMCANorth.org. Good morning. Welcome back, y'all. Thank you for listening to the Friday edition of the Donna and Steve Experience. Right here on My Talk 1071, where talk is fun. Everybody knows Marge Simpson's hairstyle, right? If I say Marge Simpson, you can envision her. Yep. Big blue hair. Straight up, right? Straight yep. up. Blue so originally. There was a thought uh, that it was it was designed that way by their creator, Matt Groening, mm. who wanted to hide something on her. And this gag was meant to be revealed in the final episode of the series. But they scrapped the plan long ago because there would have been too many inconsistencies throughout the long run of the show for this 
reveal to work in the final episode. Any guess as to what Marge Simpson's hairstyle was designed to hide? Um, a weird mole. A weird mole. Writing that down. Okay, Dawn? <laughs> I would say a cone head that she's an alien. Oh, I like that. Dawn is closer. You're both wrong that Dawn was closer. A birdcage. <laughs> Well, that's a good. <laughs> that's a good guess. <laughs> okay, that's all I got, man. An oddly uh, shaped head. No, Bird Simpson's hair was designed to hide her rabbit ears. Oh, that's oh, funny. So rabbit. then, in the final episode, Matt Groening's idea was then she'll like let her hair down or something, and then flop out come the rabbit ears. Oh, that's hilarious. But she's a rabbit woman. But then there were too many other. things. Things that happened throughout the series where it just felt it would have the gag would have no longer felt it would feel true. very strange. Like one episode she eats rabbit, so Yeah, right. I'm kidding. I don't I'm know. sure there are those diehard fans though who would go back and be like, Well, wait, what about episode three hundred and seventy two? See, I'm looking at pictures of her now and uh, her ears are shown in almost all of them. Oh uh-huh. okay. So in, in earlier well, yeah, no, there they are. She's got ears. Maybe they were prosthetic ears, and they oh, she tucked okay. them right. she tucked them up in. Oh, Donna, I that. <laughs> Donna, do not please do not undermine or discredit my fact Sorry. that I brought you from the internet. Sorry, I blew up. Bah. Bah. Oh, this is fun, especially <laughs> in my house recently. The projectile vomit that was used in The Exorcist Damn. was actually from a famous California restaurant called. Pea Soup Anderson's. I was just going to say Pea Soup Bar Us. And, you know. So it <laughs> there, was Pea Soup. It was Pea Soup, and they used that uh, California restaurant's Pea Soup because their Pea Soup looked more like vomit on camera than Campbell's Pea Soup. What do you want me to say besides vomit? Barf, Donna? Want barf? I like barf. I heard somebody say barf the other day in reaction to, hey, do you want to like, whatever, do you want to go watch an indie movie at the movie theater? Barf. And I thought that was very funny. That's fun. Funny. Bar. That's, it, that's it hasn't you, been around in a long time. Throw up, vomit, or barf? Which do you prefer to use as a word? Throw up. Puke. Puke is also a contender. <laughs> it is your body turning inside out. There's no wonder why so many people mm. are so afraid to throw up and do anything in their power to not. It is deeply disturbing what happens to your body. Yeah. And you're sitting there and you're like, control. you're not in control. I know something's coming. And then you're sort of just talking to yourself and then bang, it's just on you and overtakes you. And it's not done until it's done with you. I'm not saying anything because I know the emails are going to start coming yeah. in of people going, thanks a lot. I'm trying to enjoy my omelet. Donna, <laughs> if you try to please everyone, you please no one. All right. That's why I just, <laughs> with reckless master, abandon. That so, master is Steve. Yes, Send the hate right. mail to Steve. Yeah, I know. Here, let me, in case you guys don't know my email, it's I don't care at I'm not responding.net. <laughs> that is a that's real, an actual... that's an actual email address that I made up in the middle of Twin Cities Live because someone complained about, I don't know, some bull crap. And then I made it up, and immediately our executive producer, Christian, said, Do you want me to set that up? Because I can. And then we had it set up by the end of the show. And then for a couple shows, talk about a bit that we bailed on too early. People sent us emails. Mm-hmm. And then we would read them on the air, oh. and then I wouldn't respond. I would just read them, look at the camera, mm. say nothing, move it on. <laughs> it was a great bit, it's Donna. A good Did, bit. I Donna. love it. Oh my gosh, I got one yesterday about something that was said on the morning show. Tell us, oh, I really? want to know everything. Um, I don't even. I don't want to. No, I don't want to <laughs> give this person any type of. But they did say, "I can't wait to hear your response." And forward oh. it to your boss, Amy. I know want to know what she has to think. Thanks. Whoa. And so they'll be waiting forever. <laughs> Which is the best revenge of all. Yeah. I yeah. Just it. not. Why are you a... listening to this show? You have no idea what it's about, apparently. I don't. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Not acknowledging is really great because they really want you to acknowledge. It's like so freaking aggressive. Yeah. Like the yeah. drivers you know, this on 94. is going to me, Donna. and I didn't do what you were complaining about. Yeah. I cannot wait to find out what this is. We got to go to break. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Let's see I'll here. To you guys. Okay, yeah, forward it to us. Thanks. The witches in Macbeth didn't really use Eye of Newt 
That was just the ancient term for mustard seeds. What? Oh. The witches so, in Macbeth didn't really use eye of newt. It was just the ancient term for mustard eye seeds. Eye of newt and wing of bat. Something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to see Macbeth. Do you know, um, oh. Francis McDormand, I think, is playing Macbeth in a new movie, which yeah. uh, I really want to see. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't Denzel... Could be in a in a new yes. version of Macbeth. There, it's a really good cast. Should we all watch it? The tragedy of uh, Macbeth. Yeah, Denzel Washington, Francis McDormand, Lady Macbeth, directed by Macbeth. Joel Cohen. Oh, of course. Never. Um. Oh, who else is in this? It's an adaptation. Or are we doing full Shakespeare here? Mm. I think it's full Shakespeare. Okay. How do we feel about that? Well, Shakespeare's a tough read. It is. You really needed the Cliff's notes for that. Yeah. There you know, although I'd rather watch a movie, I guess. I don't know, than than read. Reading his stuff feels laborious. <laughs> I don't know. Watching I agree. it can yes. be troublesome too. I agree. All right. Well anyway. Good talk, y'all. Yeah, that was fun. Let's do it again. When? Like coming up in like three minutes or so. Oh, well, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I want to talk about who is coming back to the view. And uh, TV shows that are actually also podcasts. Oh, it's a good list. Yeah. All right, we'll get to all of that coming up next on my talk. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the show, the Donna and Steve show on my talk 1071, Everything Entertainment. Donna Valentine and Steve Patterson, producer Don McLean. Um, hmm. Can you believe The View has been on for 25 years? I know. Back in the day, who was the original? Let me see if I can remember the original cast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun game. 25 years ago, for context, Donna, no other reason. Okay. I was 13. Okay. And a late bloomer. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We had Star Jones. <laughs> are you guessing or are you looking it up? No, I'm guessing. Okay. Everything's more fun as a guessing game. Here we go. We had Star Jones. We had Baba Wawa, Barbara Walters. Uh-huh. We had Joy Bahar. Uh, and we had, was she there at the beginning, Elizabeth Hasselbeck? I just don't think she was there that early. Um, Star Jones, Barbara Walters, Joy Behar. Mm-hmm. And. De. De. Okay. Desiree. Darren, Deb. Deborah Messing, Debba, Debra, Deb, 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 Debbie, Debbie Gibson. That is incorrect. It's Debbie, Debbie, Montanopolis. Ooh, close. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Just too many syllables in there. Montanopolis. Yeah, yeah. I she was remember. the young one, very young. What was her claim to fame though prior to that? Like, why was she chosen? I can't remember. <sighs> not sure Donna, that's a great she, question because i know like elizabeth hasselbeck was on survivor, survivor. Right? Yeah. yes she's stunning D- the debbie mop and up what is that again debbie uh-huh martin ma up oh Ten. you lost okay let's see here um oh hey debbie hey, Deb. uh by the way debbie a towering figure at five foot nine inches tall she is 47 years young mm-hmm. today. Oh, today? Uh, oh, I thought it was her birthday. No, 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 no. She, goodness gracious. Come on. She was a you got journalist. It. Was she a journalist first, maybe? The hell if I know. I don't know. <sighs> well, anyway, give us new stuff and I'll tell you the old stuff once okay. I Okay. So the new stuff is to celebrate their 25th season... And it looks like Meredith Vieira, Star Jones, oh. and Elizabeth Hasselbeck are going to be stepping in for the whole month to replace Megan McCain. Wow. Oh my Just God. for the month That's of February. Fun. So, hmm. Star Jones, I'm, I don't think she and Barbara Walters got along mm-hmm. real well. They had a falling out, right? Yeah. Remember when she like did her whole wedding? Her entire wedding. It was all endorsements. Yep. Yes. Every piece of her wedding. Get it, girl. 
<laughs> was an endorsement Good for her. I don't yeah, know. that's right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think. I mean, gosh, Donna, if you got married right now, your prenup could be sponsored by Bradshaw and Bryant somehow. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> let's get it bought and paid for, yeah. guys. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, back and they to... drove away from a car that was fixed at TGK Automotive. <laughs> yes, Queen. Oh my gosh. Well, um, um, I think this is fun. This Deb- is cool. Debbie Matinopoulos, by the way. Yes. Uh, she said that she met up with Meredith Vieira, Star Jones, and Joy Behar at the Essex House in New York City for an audition. The four women, along with Barbara Walters, became the original host of The View. So Meredith Vieira was there. From the beginning as well. She said, what made me so stressed out? I was 22, sitting next to Barbara Walters. You know what? And she came from MTV. That's what it was. Wow. I think she was a production assistant. She was a production assistant. assistant. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I was a she production She said, I was not ready to do time. anything except to be working at MTV and going to clubs and concerts. And uh, then, bang, she was there. She did two seasons. And then she was fired. I don't think she was the best... Donna! <laughs> she just couldn't fit in with the hard-hitting topics. Yeah. It was, yeah. like, painfully obvious that she didn't know what they were talking about. It, yeah, I mean, she was so young. Yeah, it just wasn't fair to her, I don't think. Yeah. You needed somebody from, like, NPR or something. That's true. Yes. That's she true. Just, it was, she just wasn't... <laughs> well read right enough. that's what i'm yes it's one thing to be on a stupid show like this and be yeah you know, we can be dumb as we can be you yeah know, but to be they on market a show our that, stupidity exactly yeah. but to be on a show that's about politics and your point yeah. of view you need to have some kind of i would not do well on the show i'll be honest with you oh there's, there's, uh, the there's yelling so I can't many deal things with. i i don't care about that they talk about Sorry to say, it just doesn't interest me, and so yeah. I'm very, I'm not well versed. Yeah, that would not be my happy place. Like if if we, if someone came to you, knocked on the door, and said, "All right, we're going to put you on a show. You pick." I mean, would you pick the View? It no. just feels so contentious it's all like, the time. Uh, and I don't want to be on a show that's going to make me feel dumb. Right. So I feel very comfortable although here I, and the morning show. Although I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but um yeah, I I'm curious to know what she's doing now. Debbie anyway. Matinopoulos? Yeah. Wow, this, we're doing a deep dive on Debbie. I know. What's the smartest show on this station? Not counting the weekend shows. They oh, all they the smart- just the weekday shows. I think um, Colleen and Bradley. Yeah, probably, but they're they are smart in one area. <laughs> they go neck deep in whatever they're deep diving into yeah. that day. But you're probably right. I mean, um, I think they're <sighs> very well spoken. You know, they yeah. they're really they're a little more what's cerebral. Yes. Than we we know that we are not, and we don't say that in a self deprecating way. We are not. We pride ourselves in our <laughs> curiosity, yeah. the curiosity of the in moment. Googling things. Yes, the we are. Uh, a few years ago, we were working on a little tagline uh, for our show. Do you remember this, Donna? And and I think we had landed at one point on accidentally uh, entertaining and educational, something like that. Like we accidentally <laughs> end up. If you listen to us, I think you get smarter after you listen to us because we mentally workshop so many things in the moment. But, guys, that's human conversation, isn't it? We're not professionals. Oh, well, we are. Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, by so. definition, we are. Because um, we do this professionally. Listen, I love LoJ, but I'm not going to give them the smartest show on the station award. Although, <laughs> um, Lori sometimes scares me with what she knows. I'd like to drag her into contract negotiations hmm. as my representative. She just seems like she knows a lot and isn't afraid to tell you what she knows. Lori? She's maybe the only person that I'm still afraid of <laughs> at this station is, is Lori. It used to be Kenny, too, but Kenny, um, no, Kenny underneath the Kenny beard is a, the funniest person on the planet. Yeah, well, he's, he, is a, a soft, he is a soft inner core to him. Yeah, yes, fluffy nougat. Yeah, but when he used to come into the room, uh, when you Ryan and I would be in the room and they'd still be on the air, and he'd say, "Hey, dummies, 
I used to always think, I hope I can like make him smile or laugh at oh, something. Yeah. I just felt intimidated, like because it looks like if you meet Kenny in an alley, he's got a harpoon. And he's going <laughs> to gut you. Harpoon. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> and then he's going to go spearfishing with that harpoon. Yeah, he'll use my oh, liver gosh. now as That's chum. Right. Yes, yes. And i got to yeah. be honest, I'd be honored. It'd be great. Oh. Um, okay, I came across this list of shows that have podcasts that I didn't really know about. For instance, you know I loved the show New Girl. One of yes. the my top 10 sitcoms of all time. Loved it. Laugh every episode. Well, uh, Zoe Deschanel, Hannah Simone, and Lamorne Morris, uh, who are Jess, Cece, and Winston in the show, they have a podcast all about the show that they were in. So the, these aren't fan shows. Oh, I see. Okay. These are. I was pe- curious about this list. Yeah, so these are people who were in the show who are now are doing a podcast about the show. So if you wanted to go back and rewatch one of your favorite sitcoms or dramas, you could use this podcast as a sort of companion and almost a navigational tool because they go through episodes at a time. If you were a fan of the show Supernatural, Supernatural Then and Now is out with Rob Benedict and Richard Spite Jr., who played Chuck and Gabriel. Now, that's a show that I never watched, but if you watch Supernatural, those names are all clicking for you. Maybe the most popular one is The um, Office Ladies with Jenna Fisher yes. and Angela Kinsey. Yes. So Pam and Angela from The Office. Oh. And they actually they uh they're about to finish a book that I don't know when it's going to come to market but I know from Jenna Fisher's Instagram it had to be finished this fr- today. Today wow. was the day that they had to put the pens down and it needs to be finished. But they do a deep dive. I listened to a couple of their episodes of The Office ladies. They'll bring on former co-stars They will bring on former guest stars that sort of have a cult following just because they were on that particular episode that went so crazy. Uh, And they'll read from the script, and then they'll talk behind-the-scenes stuff about, do you remember when we were shooting this scene? And it's long form, and Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher in real life, Pam and Angela, are best friends, even though on the show they were like oil and water. Uh, But that's a fun podcast. One Tree Hill has one. Does Friends have one? Friends does not. That'd be kind of fun. Say by the Bell does. (laughs) Zach to the Future with Mark Paul Gossler. Gossip Girl. Zach to the Future. (laughs) Friday Night Lights. Ooh. It's called Clear Eyes, Full Hearts. It's with Derek Phillips and Stacey Oristano, who are the on screen, screen couple Billy and Mindy, who I think Billy. Do you remember Riggs? Donna. I didn't watch the show. Riggs. Remember Riggs? I do, yeah. You say it was Riggs' Riggs's oh. older brother. Yeah. I went to school with someone we call Riggs. Oh, man. Riggs in Friday Night Lights was... What a character. What a bleeping show. Oh, Friday Night Lights. Donna screwed it up. She watched a few episodes and then went from episode four, season one, to episode five, season four. <laughs> Why is she dating him? Why she's she so in high young. What's she doing with that? She's twenty. She's twenty. You oh skipped three gosh. seasons. I, yeah. Oh. I have issues. <laughs> no. You sound like a pretty tightly put together piece of furniture. You have the email problem. Had, You're mad at everyone who's a licensed driver uh, on scotch, 35 and 94. I tape in my purse for some weird reason. <laughs> I wasn't even taping anything. <laughs> what is it there? <laughs> oh, good golly. All right, we'll take a break. Boo just flipped maybe, it in yeah, there. Yeah, maybe baby buddy boo. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. That dog doesn't strike me as fine motor skills sort of a dog. <gasps> he's, lum- he's lumbering. He- uh, you'll see one day. You'll be like, oh, this dog is awesome. What, someday this spring, we will. I will go with you. I'll bring Rex. Okay, we'll go you'll to the dog You'll bring Buddy. Park. We'll go to whatever dog park you go to with all the dog gangs. <laughs> and then uh, and then we'll sit on a bench and talk, I guess, while okay. the dogs that run. That sounds great. If you see something, say something. That's our motto here. Yes. Uh, and Donna saw a little something. Okay, I saw a couple of things. So one thing I want you to really look at is a mural that just went up in Los Angeles. It is super cool. I'll explain why when we come right back on My Talk 1071. You are listening to the Donna and Steve show on My Talk 1071, where talk is fun. Hey, if you see something, say something. Oh, that is catchy, huh? 
Time for If You See Something, Say Something with Donna and Steve. If you see something, say something. Come on and party tonight. Sorry about that. Hey, man, wow. what's happening over there? I just Would did you a... put spray uh, air freshener in your pants again? <laughs> <laughs> Donna. <laughs> I haven't set off that air freshener thing. A listener said, hey, don't set off that air freshener in your car that you talked about, where you set it off and it emits the spray for 15 minutes, and then you have to let it air out. They were like, that's pretty chemical heavy. Yeah. And then she was saying, my husband does this all natural thing, and he can just come out and do it for you. But I don't want to. I just feel like I maybe want a chemical at one time. In your pants? Not... (laughs) I don't get it. What's I'm happening? sorry, Don. I mentioned I'm sorry. Oh, I she forgot. wasn't here. She, she wasn't, wasn't here. here. Oh, no. I am not setting off Old an air freshener in my pants. That, it for you. That he, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is an air freshener that I got at the hard or the the auto parts store that you set in it's your like car. A bug bomb. Precisely. That's right. Like you're trying to kill oh, roaches yeah. in your house. Okay. And then for 15 minutes, you turn your vents on high, recycled uh, at cabin yeah, air, yeah, yeah. and then it goes. Tss, for 15 minutes, finds all the odor-causing things, and then goes into your vents and your filters and all of that. And uh, you have to do that for 15 minutes, and then you have to leave your doors open for 15 Whoa, minutes. Whoa, like intense. cleaning your oven or something. Yeah, Pretty kind cricket. of. But Why'd then the listener was that? like, well, I just thought I wanted something better than like the tree and something that I didn't have to spray You're all the really time. You're really into odors. <laughs> I am very much into fragrance, Donna. Odor. It's a negative connotation. You concern me how uninterested you are no, in No, I am interested. Uh, I wonder how your car smells. I bet it might be good. worse than you think. Yeah, my car smells terrible. However, I smell great. My house smells great. I'd like to do the sniff test. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know if Whatever. I'm buying what you're selling. Fine. So here's what I saw since that's what the segment is. (laughs) Uh, There is an Eddie Van Halen mural that just went up outside of the Guitar Center in Hollywood. And it became part of this augmented reality experience because Mm -hmm. it animates the artwork as if the picture is moving it's hard to explain, but it only works when you look at it through your phone. Yes, but the the mural itself, just the paint on the side of the Guitar Center building, is radical. <laughs> it is so cool, right? It just looks it's good. great. So you got this, I mean, it covers the entire side of this Guitar Center. Imagine that in like a parking lot. Yep. And so it would have been a cinder block wall. Now is Eddie Van Halen shredding on the guitar he's leaning back his fingers are way deep on the fret he's picking away on a killer solo now when you hold your phone up to it um with this i don't know if you have to do an app or if it's just your camera or what but the augmented reality kind of like with pokemon go that kind of technology then eddie starts playing the guitar and there's like you could see his his hands moving as he's playing john are you seeing bolts. this no uh-uh yeah, you got to scroll down all the way to okay. the... And I have this linked up on the Don and Steve Show Links page so you can see it. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's like this 20-second video that shows you. It's a pretty cool gimmick because, yeah. again, the painting just looks awesome. Okay. Flames start to shoot out. Um, yeah, lightning bolts. Wow. And what's so- cool about it is it's not dependent, Donna, on the augmented reality. That's a fun add-on. Yes. But even once that gimmick wears off... It's just a really cool mural. That yeah. is neat. So the people um, who made this happen did this. They unveiled it on what would have been his 66th birthday. And it was created by this artist named uh, Robert Vargas, who completed the work in like a really accelerated amount of time. And so they had this big unveiling. There are fans there. And the uh, Sunset Strip is where Van Halen made a name for themselves. So it's really, really cool. Following the mural's installation, uh, according to Loudwire, Wolfgang Van Halen, Eddie's 30-year-old son, came to the defense of the mural. Because some people online, because just people online like to criticize things, they were criticizing some things. To which he said, the mural is incredible, literally flawless. I can understand not liking a piece of art for whatever reason, but... Saying it doesn't look like him makes you look, quote, 
big dumb. <laughs> it's right. not even a matter of taste. It's just straight up wrong. Good it's, for him. Yeah. Yeah. And he would know before anybody else. Yeah. Big like you dumb. see a picture of your dad or a painting of your dad, yeah. you're going to that's the person you're going to listen to. <laughs> right. You know. Oh, it's so cool. Anyway, that that's really what cool. I saw this morning and then I saw another story. Yes, queen. Of there's a guy, okay? Mm-hmm. He has been driving for 72 years. That alone. Without a license. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. He, he just recently got caught. Um, mm. But he I don't think he was doing anything wrong. I think there was just like something on his car that got it's him a, pulled over. It's always how it happens. So, wow. It wouldn't even occur to me. Because imagine being the cop. You're like, are, right? Are you so... This license is... and registration. What? Like? What do you mean, license? I have been driving since 1950. <laughs> yeah. So listen. So, <laughs> right, right. Oh my gosh. So he's 84 years old. He lives in the UK. He admitted to police that he'd been driving without a license, <laughs> not just on that trip or for a couple of years. 72 years. He's been driving since he was 12. <laughs> and even when he was totally caught, uh, it was because of the technology. He has a, a what they're calling a blue mini. And it was flagged by a traffic camera for being unregistered. So that's why he got pulled over. Wow. And they were very gentle with him, (laughs) meaning he probably didn't get a serious charge or anything. But it's just like, it's fine. Just go ahead and keep driving. The police said he was hard of hearing and his reactions were poor and he was very unsteady on his feet. So it wasn't even safe Mm. for him to do. Oh, man. So I don't know. Here's something. Just drove every now and then just to the store. Donna, listen how empathetic you're being, even though it could have been him next to you on 94 this oh, morning. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? You're right. By back. the way, learned something um, when I was at the auto parts store the other day. Uh, so I was looking at the air fresheners. Back to that. Somebody said, hey, I'll tell you this. Uh, the black ice, you know that black ice scent? Have you ever seen that? This person said that they have heard law enforcement say, Sometimes just the heavy smell of black ice makes us want to like search a vehicle because it's such a heavy scent so that they could think you're cover covering, up like pot smell. <laughs> exactly. Or something. Oh. What I don't know what black ice is actually. It's just a fragrance. It's a super super strong. Oh, yeah, smell. I've never heard. Yeah, of it. it's like a bad cologne sprayed heavy. Mm. Don't look at me like that, <laughs> it's Donna. Really, really smells cheap. You know, I've been spraying my Abercrombie cologne here in my little home studio that is my closet. Oh. I'm just spraying it like it's room spray now. <laughs> smells pretty good in here, kind of oh like an Abercrombie gosh, store. Oh you have a problem. <laughs> Bye, Dawn. Bye, have Dawn. a good weekend. Bye. We love uh, you. We'll come back with some music news up next on My Talk.